Hello everyone. I'm sure you've probably heard about this by now, but just three days ago, UE VR was released to the public. For those not familiar with UE VR, it is a tool that allows you to inject VR into any Unreal Engine game that's using version 4 or 5. So you can't use it with, you know, like really old games that's using like UE3, unfortunately. But there's lots of thousands of games using UE4+. Plus. Well, on that note, there is a spreadsheet that I'll link to in a video description that contains the compatibility level for UE4 to 5 games. Many work right out of the box, believe it or not, with like no tweaking required. While others, you probably want to download a profile from somebody else where they've done all the hard work and tweak the settings. For instance, this game that we're looking at right now, which is Robocop, I downloaded a profile. I had to go onto the Discord, which I'll link in the video description. I went to the UEVR Discord, joined the Robocop section, and then I downloaded the profile. I had to click on the pin messages, and from there, I was able to like install the profile into UEVR, but it was just that simple. All right, so if this is your first time here, please consider giving a like and subscribing to help me beat this YouTube algorithm. All right, I'll show a few games in this video so you can see what we're working with here. Even though we've been looking at Robocop footage all along, this is pretty mind blowing to me though because this means a lot of us has been collecting, that has been collecting games over the years, will now immediately have a massive VR library. Some people are claiming this is save PC VR. Now, if you've already been following my channel, you probably already know we already have some good PC VR games, such as DCS World, for example, of course. And that already directly supported motion controllers and many other peripherals. But still, this is a major, major shakeup. All right, so the first game I want to talk about here is Robocop, which fully supports six degrees of freedom, meaning we can use our motion controllers. And oh boy, I'm so hooked. This game almost feels like it was made for VR, funny enough. The controls are so awesome. That's just how good this UEVR tool is. Anyway, so far though, I'm seeing some issues here and there, such as the button images in the game, of course, does not match up with the motion controller buttons. That's just something you have to keep in mind. So for example, when the game says press X, to reload is actually the B button on my Oculus Quest controller. One global limitation also you have to keep in mind, like for all games apparently, is that you must disable DLSS frame generation in the settings. Otherwise, you will have a bad time and lots of instability. Lastly, I did get one crash after like I had everything set up for Robocop. I had to profile import everything like after I played for like about 40 minutes. So make sure you check the comments just in case. Like by the time we watch this, maybe I have some update on video stability. So to wrap this thing up, I'm having a blast with Robocop. I just can't emphasize that enough. I just do not want to go back to playing it for, on flat screen. <laughs> I, I just hope it can remain stable as I play through the game. Anyways, the motion controllers, they feel way better than keyboard, mouse, or gamepad by a long shot. Not to mention, the visuals are very stunning in VR. And I have it set to medium settings right now, actually, in this footage. It's set to medium, and it still looks like that great. Okay, so our second game I want to talk about is Solstice. If you've never heard of this game, it's basically like an old school Devil May Cry game blended with Claymore, the anime. 
I'm just using my gamepad with this game, but it still feels great having the extra depth that you get from VR and the freedom to move around your camera. As with other games though, watching cutscenes can be just a tiny bit janky, but it's just a minor inconvenience. I'm personally okay with it, but maybe this is an issue for others, so I'm just gonna point that out. I had like zero crashes. It was just completely stable. I really hate I didn't get this video up before the Steam sale ended though, cause I have the feeling that there's gonna be at least one person that's gonna look at this video footage. They're gonna be like, what the heck is that game? That looks awesome. I want that game. And, and the Steam sale is over at the time of this recording, at the time that I'm uploading this video finally. But um, hopefully whenever you're watching this, You'll be able to grab this wonderful game, add it to your wish list, so you get the notification, of course. And that's all I have for this game. I ran into zero bugs for like the hour or so I played it. Maybe, I think it was like actually 90 minutes. I didn't have any bugs at all. It was completely stable, flawless, I would say. It just felt great. It just worked right out the box. Perfect, I, I believe it's a rating that they have on the spreadsheet that I showed at the beginning of this video, and it really does feel perfect. The third game I'll be showing is Ghostwire Tokyo. I was really pumped to play this one since it's a first person game. However, we're going to be using a controller here. I don't think anyone got six degrees of freedom working with it. And, you know, uh, it. It probably doesn't make the most sense. Anyways, I just use a gamepad. But I had a lot of fun with this game. Like the other games, cutscenes can get a little funny though. You know, just so just keep that in mind. But there is an option I found that you can disable VR and kind of switch to 2D. So in your headset, you can switch to 2D, watch a cutscene, go back to VR. Anyways, um, I just kept it in VR myself personally, but it is something to keep in mind. Anyways, I played this game for quite a while. It's just funny being able to inject VR into these games. Like I mentioned previously, it just breathes new life into them. Like I played this game like maybe an hour. I got it for free, like right after I got my, my video card, my 4090. But I just played it for like one hour and that was it. But now... I have a reason to actually come back and play this game a lot more since I can enjoy it in VR and it works very well. Okay, finally, there is an honorable mention with Ghost Runner, but that one, I noticed you have to scale the arms using UEVR. I'll link to the Discord in the description, like I believe I mentioned before, but from what I gather, it takes like two to three steps inside the tool to actually scale your arms up so they look correct. But besides that, that was the only issue I noticed. It seemed like it ran pretty stable and it looked pretty good. Alas, though, I didn't have a whole lot of time to spend with it. I think I only played 30 minutes, and I really feel like this game could use, like, two hours because I think that the scale, like, you can set the scale and get the arm scaled up to look correct, but you'll lose that setting when you transition to the next stage. All right, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. I enjoyed working on this video. I really enjoyed this tool. I think it has a very bright future. Um, I'm definitely going to donate to it because I really would like to see even more features added to it. 
Anyways, again, thanks for watching.